So many things have happened in the past year. We just call it the past year, even though it's some, not even an hour ago, but we call it the past year. God has been good to us. Even though many of us might have experienced difficulties, tough times, pain, sorrow, what have you. But all the same, God has been good to us. As Paul would tell the Thessalonians, in all things we should give thanks to God, for that is the will of God for us. We are here today, this midnight, praising and thanking God for his mercies. And we have every cause to do that. And God says he's blessing us as we heard in the first reading from Numbers. It is a reading we have every year, the first of January. God says, this is how you bless my people. So the Lord is blessing all of us. And he blesses the world. Everything the Lord has created is in his place. So the Lord continues to bless us. And most importantly, he blesses us with a feast of Mary, the mother of God. Through whom we receive the Savior, the Redeemer of the world. You know, when Mary received the message from the angel, he says, Hail Mary, full of grace. And that grace is Christ Jesus. So as soon as Mary said yes, that grace, the word of God, became flesh and lived in her. So we thank God that we begin every year with this great feast because when Christ hung on the cross, he told the disciples he loved, says, this is your mother, and he says, mother, this is your son. In other words, he's giving the world, his church, in the hands of her, his mother Mary. And giving mother Mary also to us. So it is a great feast, a great day, as we begin every year with Mary, our mother, because she continues to be our mother. And if we journey truthfully with Mary, our mother, trust me, the year will always be successful for us. God has created everything beautiful. The year 2018, 2019, 2017 were all good years. Because God created everything beautiful. He made it 300 and how many days? 65 days, right? How many months? 12 months. And how many weeks? 52 plus 1, right? Plus 1 day. So God has made every year the same weeks, the same months, and the same days. So whatever God has created, He said, is good. At the beginning of creation, He said, all the things He has created, So every year is good. Sometimes we say, If it was not so, if it was not a good year, then ask yourself, why the year was not a good year for me? I'm not talking about natural disasters that will come our way. I'm not talking about that. They are a necessary end of humanity. But even in that, we need to say thank you, God, because it gives us strength and grace to overcome even the pain of death. So everything is in its place. It is us who would have to make use of whatever God has put in place for us. So if 2020 is going to be as we put in quote a good year or a bad year, it depends on me or it depends on you. The wind and the air blowing around us has not changed from 2019 till now. It has not changed, it's the same. So God remains the same. God never changed. He is God. But we change. Because we change our attitude, and we change our style, and we change our way of life. 
If we should be consistent with God, trust me, things will work the way we want them to work. So there are a few things that I want to reflect with you as I sat back and reflected on how I went through 2019 and how I'm going to live 2020. What I told myself is that God has put everything there for me to enjoy. But how do I enjoy whatever God has given me? The first thing I told myself is that I cannot do things, the same thing every day and expect a different result. I can't do the same thing, I'm doing the same thing every day, the same thing every day, and I'm expecting a different result. In other words, I cannot live a certain way of life always and expect that some kind of miracles should happen in my life. So what I told myself is that God gave me the grace to explore different avenues of life, to explore different things in life, so that I can grab the opportunities that are there for me. If you are doing the same thing, the same everything every day, let me give a short example. If I'm working at one place, and that is the place I'm working, and my salary is the same, you don't expect that at the end of the day, you're going to have an increase in your salary, but that is the work you've been doing. But if you want an increase, then you explore another place. Let me look for another job, or let me change job, or let me upgrade myself so that I can earn more than what I've been receiving. And the second thing I told myself is, God, don't let me enslave myself in somebody's mind. Sometimes we live our life as if we're living it for somebody else. And that is what we've been doing consistently. Let me live my life the way God you want me to live my life, not how people want me to live my life. When the moment we start doing that, it's like you have enslaved yourself in somebody's mind. You are coming to church, you have one clothes, you have one attire, you can work it to church the whole year. Nobody cares. But your mistake is that when you are coming, you are telling yourself that they may tell me he's been wearing one cloth every time. Who cares about that? It is you. And that is why we are not progressing. So we are buying and buying and buying and buying. Because we want to change clothes every Sunday. We want to change shoes every Sunday. And I told God, I don't want to do that. Anyway, I have just learned that shit. <laughs> but maybe I'm telling you, uh, that is what I was telling myself, what I can do to, uh, to, to better my life in 2020. So don't enslave yourself in somebody's mind. It is nobody's business to think about what you eat or what you wear. It is what you think you can eat or what you think you want to wear. And that should be enough for you. Trust me if you do that. You may begin to save money. Start saving. And stop buying things you don't need. If you've been buying and buying and buying, and which are not necessary, you buy and put them into your closet, 2020, let it be a year of savings. Trust me, if your child is three years now, and you put $100 every month, by the time the child is 18 years, you realize how much you have in your savings to take care of his college. So, the year is the same. God has blessed the year for us. It is us women have to change how we live the year and make it profitable for each one of us. So don't enslave yourself. Don't enslave yourself in somebody's mind. And don't let pessimism rule your life. Oh, that is how we do it. I can't do it. It cannot be done. Who said it cannot be done? That is 
that's when we are pessimistic. That we have the mind that, oh, I can't do it. That is how we've been doing it every year. But let optimism rule your life. Be optimistic about what you want to do. Because God has engraved in every person. God has engraved in you the potential to change whatever you want to change. And to move on with your life with whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to achieve in life, God has engraved it in you. That grace is given to every person. And that is the reason why I said at the beginning of the Mass that the year is blessed by God. It is you who can make the difference. You can change your lot. So don't live with the, the mind that that syndrome of, oh, it can't be done. Oh, that is how we do it syndrome. Explore something new. Sometimes we fail to take risk. Have a vision in life. I told myself, I'm going to have a vision. You might think that, oh, I'm a priest, why do you need a game? I have a vision. And my vision is to work toward the vision, no matter the circumstances, no matter what may come my way, I still focus on the vision, whatever I want to achieve. So when you live your life without a vision, it's like you are like in the world, that's the wind blows and it goes away. So you see, when you, when you, the year 2020 is going to be a good year. And it will be a good year only when you, you have a vision in life and you work toward the vision. You still focus on the vision. The last thing I want to leave you with, be loyal to the word of God and pray. Whatever that is happening in our world, trust me, you will find it in the Bible, in the word of God. When you detach yourself from the word of God, you see, when you read yesterday, that the first reading, the gospel was about, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And it's the word of God that became a light and dispelled the darkness in our lives, in our world. And he says, those who accepted him were given the grace to become children of God. Not by anything, but by the grace of God. So my dear ones in Christ Jesus, we can never live our lives fully devoid of Christ Jesus and the word of God. The word of God becomes our light, lightening the path for us to fall. It is the word of God which is Christ Jesus who dispels the darkness of pain, the darkness of ignorance, the darkness of error in our life. It is the word of God. Christ Jesus who is the light. So let us be loyal to the word of God. You do not deceive Kosiapia. You deceive yourself when you call yourself a Christian and you don't wake up to read even a verse in the Bible. You deceive yourself when you have the opportunity or a chance to read your Bible, to go on your knees and pray, and you think that you are tired, you can't pray. Where do you get the strength and where do you get the grace? The fuel that will prepare you to in life. It is prayer and the word of God. So as we all come to a new year and we make all kinds of resolutions. Resolutions are just dreams. It is only when we put them into actions that they become a reality. There's no miracle that is going to happen in your life. The only miracle is responding to the grace of God. That is the only miracle we have. Because they are there, God is showering his blessings upon us. He's blessing us every day. But when we do not avail ourselves to the, to the blessings of God, to God's grace, no miracle can ever happen in your life. God has put in you something that is special. I cannot save you. I can only guide you. You can call whoever pastor in Ghana and send money to your cousins to go and see whichever pastor or to go anywhere, it can never save you. You can save yourself. No one can save you. So let us stop 
believing in people, but believe in God and believe in yourself. If you are a student, God has planted in you knowledge, wisdom, intellect to make a difference in your studies. But if you decide to do the same thing, you go for lectures, you come and close your books, no research, you are on your phone and do the same thing at the same time, you don't expect a different result. The same results you receive. So let us think deep. Go deep into ourselves. And realizing that God has something special for me in 2020. And I need to grab whatever God has for me. Nobody will run and grab it for you. It's only you who can grab it. Amen. Amen.